Welcome to the Exit Rich Podcast, where the leading authority on buying, selling, fixing, and growing companies, Michelle Seiler Tucker, is dedicated to helping you find the path to retire rich and move on to your next adventure by exiting your business for the desired dream price you deserve. Get ready to exit rich with your host, Michelle Seiler Tucker. Hello, all of our friends and fans and followers. Welcome to another episode of Exit Rich. I'm so excited to have my very good friend, Eric Swanson, awesome Swanson, on the show today. Eric Swanson and I have a lot of things in common, but one of the biggest things is Brian Tracy. Brian Tracy is Eric Swanson's mentor, and he also uh, wrote a glowing testimonial for my book, Exit Rich. So Eric, let's talk a little bit about Eric. I mean, my God, he has so many credentials. It's, his bio was this long, so I had to shorten it to, to a couple of paragraphs. But Eric is an award-winning international keynote speaker, 10 times number one national best-selling author in five different categories of success. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to hear more about that. And Eric is in great demand all around the world, speaking on stages to more than a million people per year my god that's almost as big as tony robbins <laughs> maybe he's bigger got, he's got he's got yeah. <laughs> and so and so he's also been invited to speak at harvard university and he's a member of the ted talk family with his latest ted talk speech called a dose of awesome eric welcome to the show thank you so much michelle great to see you i, I love you and all what you're doing Thank you. So tell our, our audience a little bit more about Awesome Swanson and how did you get that title, Awesome Swanson, and just tell our listeners a little bit more about you. Sure. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for bringing me on the show, by the way. Great to see all of your, your awesome viewers and listeners. I see you back there somewhere. Um, let's see. I got started 25 years ago with Brian Tracy, and he was my very first mentor. Uh, I ended up working with him. I came from a waiter's background, so I, I waited oh, tables. Wow. I was a server for years for, well, my first 25 years, I was a server and, uh, and I'm still a server, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So I went from serving to serving and, uh, and, and Brian taught me the value of building, building um, ourselves as the business and, and, and really helping people on, on this journey of success. So I, I was, I was in, I was like, ah, yeah, I didn't even know Brian Tracy at first. I had to ask people who was this guy? And I'm like, Dick Tracy. I don't know who Dick Tracy. They're like, no, it's Brian Tracy. <laughs> and I asked a very respected, uh, respectable uh, gentleman named Buddy Schilling, who is one of my sort of a, a, a mentor in my, in my, in my early years. Um, he would come in. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. Sorry, buddy. But Buddy's a, uh, a, a huge mogul in, in real estate over in Austin, Texas. And um, he owns uh, tons of tons of real estate and, and has lots of agents and so forth. And, uh, and he told me he would come in every Thursday uh, to have his whiskey with one ice cube. I remember this right now. Oh, my gosh. And he would come in and, and and, uh, and he's like, so what's, what's going on, Eric? He would always request me because he, he wanted to be positive and he wanted to be left alone at the same time. <laughs> so I would always wait on him. And, uh, and, and he told me, I, I said, well, this week, you know, some gentleman came in, Dick Tracy or something and his manager. And, and they asked me if, you know, I like to travel, like to make money. And if I want to train, it sounds like one of those weird things. Right. And he goes, no, 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 no. Do you mean Brian Tracy? And I said, maybe. And I showed him the business card. He's like, yeah drop what you're doing, take the menus, go over to the gentleman over there. He actually said, wear a mistletoe on the back of your belt. This is what he said. And he goes, yeah. go over there. You'll get it. You'll, you'll get it soon. It's, it's one of those jokes that you'll get it afterwards. And, <laughs> and, and walk over to your manager in the restaurant and say, look, you know, it's been great, but I got to go. I got I to gotta work on amazing awesomeness. And that's myself. And I walked out. <laughs> I, gave him, I gave him a two-week notice, of course. And uh, two weeks later or three weeks later, January Fifth, 1998, I started with Brian Tracy, wow. and uh, that's my first start. Yeah, and then Mr. Awesome, the, the the nickname Mr. Awesome came around because Brian kept on calling it, and then and then um, Les Brown saw me coming off stage one time when I was speaking at a, at an event in California, and he goes, "You're no, it was actually in Scottsdale. Um, it might have been actually at Sharon's event. I'm not sure if you were there, but uh, Sher uh, Les looks at me and goes, "You're Mr. Awesome." I'm like, "Thank you." So it stuck, oh, wow. <laughs> and that's me. 
So you left. So you left the restaurant waiting tables to go mentor with Brian Tracy. He was your Correct. mentor. And were you working for him? Were you just in a program? What? No, I was working I mean, directly for him. Well, yeah, I was working directly for him. We. Okay. Um, well, I, and he I, used to come wait. He used to come to your restaurant, right? And you used to wait correct. on him. And he sold something in you. He's like, oh my gosh, I need him to work for me. Is that kind of how it happened? Yeah, one of his managers was was there, and then he came to the restaurant. It's called Mezzaluna in Austin, mm -hmm. Texas. It's it's a great if you, if you guys know Austin. Texas, you know what I'm talking about. And it's um, it it was yeah, I was waiting on uh, all these individuals, and then one one of the individuals was the manager of Brian Tracy, who um, Brian had at that point back in 25 years ago, he had about three or four um, sort of entities that would promote and help uh, build the Brian Tracy brand. And this was one of those, those brands. So Brian was at the helm and, uh, and I ended up getting, yeah, they saw potential in me. Of so course. it was the manager though, not Brian Tracy, correct? Well, Brian was there as well, but oh, the, manager, was there. Okay. the manager was the one who was, who was really, you know, uh, um, recruiting me on, I guess. Right. Okay. And they, they saw something in me and I, and, and I say this for not, not for my purpose, but for the purpose of, of the listeners, they saw something in me, meaning take a look at like, do what I call the 30 list, mm -hmm. write down 30 reasons why some people should see some things in you, right? You should be your own best, amazing cheerleader. I get up in the morning and I, I literally go like this. It's so funny. It's so, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. I wake up and I yawn and I go, uh, uh, and then right up at the top, I high five myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Every I'm not morning. Even kidding. Every morning. Yeah. You got to high five yourself. I mean, the way I figure, like Brian Tracy told me this, it's like um, he used to say the 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 play Cyrano de Bergerac. He he said, you know, there's a line in there, and I I don't know the line, but it was basically like at least please yourself, right? At least talk to yourself in a great way. At at the very least build yourself up and then everything will flow flow around you in a great positive right. way so they saw something in me there which is great and and i could look at it and go well they saw something in me yeah i should have seen something in me as well mm -hmm. right so so then uh anyway so to to bring it full circle um i ended up um getting uh getting recruited on to to the brian tracy team it was called brian tracy international programs and, uh, and I became a senior trainer within like a year. And then I worked for him for about seven more years. So eight years total. And I told him one time, I said, I said, Brian, th there's three things that are going to happen. He's like, what's that? I go, I go, I promise you three things. One is you're going to be sharing stages with me sometime. He's like, all right, all right. And number two is I'm going to be making at least a million dollars a year because of your mentorship right off the bat from going from waiting tables to working with you. And number three is I'm going to be driving a Porsche 911 or a Maserati. And, uh, and I hit those, all of those within a, like a year and a half, two years within working with him. And then about two years later, I ended up sharing the stage with him. And I got to tell you, uh, Michelle, I got to tell you, that is like, you know, we have the Olympics on right now. It's like passing the baton, right? Um, it's like passing the baton. He literally, and I've got a whole story on this. I won't bore you with it, but he basically passed the baton. And what's the baton? It's a microphone, right? I wish I had a microphone. Oh yeah, I do. A little one right here. Um, it's like <laughs> passing the microphone to me. He literally looked at me and there were a thousand, two thousand people in this room. It was at the Javits Center in New York City, and I was like brand new at this whole thing. I was, I, I had my confidence, but I was like still nervous, right? Getting of up course. there, and we were losing the crowd because they came to see Brian. And Brian turns to me as he's coming down the steps. They had steps going straight down for some reason, not to the side of the stage. And we're high up on the stage, and I came up, and I'm looking at him like this. He looks at me down, down at the bottom of the stairs. He comes down the stairs three steps. He squares me off. If you know, Brian, you know, he squares everyone off to yeah. talk to you, right? Yeah. He squared me off. He turns me around literally by my shoulders. Okay. He's six, two. I'm six, two as well. He turns me around and, and he's, and he goes like this clip grabs his back clip and hands me the microphone, the, the literally the, you know, the, the lapel right, mic right, right. and says, and looks at me like this. He goes, start talking now. Those are the three things he said to me, <laughs> he hands them to me. And he says, don't even put on the clip, just start talking. And he puts it to my, my mouth and I start, and, and I started talking and literally, so Brian Tracy introduced me, <laughs> right? So, so that was my, my, my first, uh, anyway, so I digress. So how did it go? 
Oh my God. It was, it was awesome. I did a 45 minute uh, uh, training on um, how to remember people's names and how to build confidence in others. So you build confidence in yourself as well. It was awesome. And uh, you know, it was great. It was awesome. What do you think that they saw in you? What do you think that they saw in you that you didn't see in yourself? No, 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 no. I did see it in myself. A lot of people don't see it in themselves though. Um, I saw it in myself. I just need, I think a lot of us need reminders that yeah. what was that one thing? What was that one thing that they saw in you that said, Hey, this guy could be really good. I'm going to get him away from waiting tables. Yeah. Um, okay. If you had to get down to one thing, I'll give you the root amazing cause of, of these, these effects. Okay. The, the cause is, is, is changing lives. That's the one thing they saw in me that because of these three things, when you said a second ago, what's the one thing I was going to say, there's probably three things, the three things of traits that I have that I believe that I have mm -hmm. is one. Um, I smile through adversity, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, look, yeah, I don't think I've never seen you not smiling. <laughs> there you go. And my smile's not all that great. Right. Anyway. So, <laughs> so the point is though, uh, like Michelle, you and I have been at, how many countless events that we share stages at you've been on my stage habitude warrior and uh and 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 there's things going on 33 speakers there's three four hundred people in the audience things go on and i'm running yeah. this whole thing and it got to keep a smile right so so long story short i i always uh that's one of the traits that i believe that i have is i'll smile through adversity i always say you know how the 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 saying is um um this too shall pass well yeah. i don't say that anymore i say this too shall be awesome because then it trains your mindset to let you know that this will be awesome if you allow it to. So then you have to dig deeper and say, okay, what are the two or three things that I can do to make it awesome? Just like exiting rich. How many people have, oh, boom, there we go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is, uh, yeah, it's a quarter, a quarter past hour. This is our uh, sponsor time. And here we go. Exit rich, what's up? All right. So it's, it's just like this. How many people are exiting and they're dying with their, song inside them still like wayne used to tell us right and and you teach people how to take these principles of success and the things that you actually have to do it's like a checklist right yeah, I love of course. That. so i have my own checklist and that checklist mm -hmm. is um show up i i i say pma or excuse me um uh, pea so you have to pee every day right pea mm -hmm. and that stands for you got to be positive be energetic and be awesome mm -hmm. so my traits were that i would always show up and conquer whatever it was all right that's number one the second trait was i correlated everything i did in business exactly like i would do when i was dating when i'm going out there on a, on a date okay by the way i'm still single just letting you guys know okay so, so, the <laughs> so maybe it's not working <laughs> <laughs> no it works it works I, I choose to be single all right so so here's the deal though I, I i mean think about what's the purpose of a date now some people get this wrong a lot of people will um the purpose for me to go on a date is to get a second date same thing that brian tracy asked me what's the purpose of a client a client to, is to get them to be a new client, another client and a, and a referral client. Right. Mm -hmm. So I do the same thing with dating is when I go out on a date, I just want to make sure that that person, that, that young lady will say, wow, I had such a great time. I feel good. Subconsciously, they're going to feel this here and here. And then at night or the next morning, they're going to say, I want more of that. What, what was that? That last, last night I went to dinner. I had a good time. I laughed. I talked about who my favorite person in the world themselves right the girl yeah, instead yeah. of what we always do talk about ourselves and uh and that's that's the way I, I do it so number one my trait was that i i would show up and uh, have no you know look look adversity in the eyes and say i got this number two is make it fun when you show up mm -hmm. and number three is never quit literally never quit and and i, I and I so they saw those three traits in you when i came to the restaurant when you waited yeah. on them yeah and and really since you asked me this question, which I love the question, I've never been asked this before. And you know, I do these probably three or four summits and, and podcasts every week. All right. You and I are very similar in this. Um, I've never been asked the question from, from like what you just did. And now I've got this answer. The answer, what they really saw in me was the end result. The end result was I would help countless individuals including them and their business, Brian Tracy's business, as well as myself. That's what leverage is all about, but also the world, right? And that's the that's the real result of, of what I do the things for. So how quick did I make that assessment? Like how many times did I visit the restaurant? Um, they The manager was there twice, met Brian once. That's and then great. I met him uh, December 12th, 1998. You know, it's kind of like, like a, 
like a date that you remember, right? Yep. December 12th, 1998, uh, they flew me to Denver, uh, Colorado, and I met him there. There was 3,000 people on stage, and I met him once there. And then they were supposed to send me through the training, um, but they saw so much training in me already. They're like, look, we're putting you in the wolves right now. Let's go. And they threw me to uh, Seattle, I think, was my first uh, first event. And I would go there, and, and I would do all the training in advance. I was the advanced trainer for Brian Tracy. So where, where would where would Eric Swanson end up at if Brian Tracy never stepped foot in that restaurant and you didn't wait on him? Yeah, same place. Same place. Really? Because same not, place? Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. It's not Brian. It's me allowing myself to take that opportunity. Right? So you don't think, though, if he would have walked in and, and, and you would have met him and he recruited you, you think you would have stayed in the same place? I, it, it would have been a different timeline, maybe a month here, two months here, a year here, a year there. But I, I believe you mean in, same place that you wouldn't have been waiting tables. You would have been correct. Waiting. Same place. Okay, meaning I, I would. Yeah, I would be in yeah. the same place that I'm in right now. Ten time number one best selling author, et cetera, et cetera. I would be in the same place. It would have just been a different road to get there. Right. right how do you right. you know, how do you get to uh, San Jose? Well, or how do you get to Google? Uh, what's it called? Uh, the the. Uh, uh, so that's an amazing story and you know look i always look at my waiters too and say gosh what you know i should recruit what <laughs> i should recruit this person <laughs> i'll tell you what it's really it's really great to look at uh servers or waiters or you know yeah. people in the serving industry because they have person i got hired to wait tables in the first place because it was all about um you know your personality you know nobody nobody wants to, to look you're why are you going to the restaurant you're going there to eat some great food. Maybe you're going there to be left alone. But most of the time, 80% of the time, you're there for the ambiance, the experience. The mm -hmm. It's ex experience, you know, not only the food, but also the the experience of the restaurant. So yeah. um, so I, I capped on that. I, I capitalized on that right away. And I would walk up to every um, every uh, table and I would do this. Just my personality This is what I would do, Michelle. I'd go up and I'd, I'd count them. Let's say you and Taylor and, you know, your whole family's there. I would, I'd count them. I'd go... I'd, I'd walk up. I wouldn't say a word. I would just, and they would see me eye contact. I would go like this. One, two, three, six tequila shots coming right up. And <laughs> they would laugh. And, and then one out of five tables would say, yeah, do that. Get six. Go ahead. Yeah. It's on, on us. All right. So my check would go up higher. Oh yeah. $50 tip right there. Just because of the tequila. You got to get them all, all sauced up. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll spend more money. So, so Eric, what do you feel are your core competencies? Like what makes you so unique? What do you do better than everybody else? Ah, uh, it's a tough question because I, I don't, it's a tough question simply because- I asked the tough question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a tough answer because yeah. I don't believe that I'm that unique from everyone else. That's, that's the reason why it's tough. It's a tough question. Um, I think all of us have it in us. We're just not finding it. There's, there's a book years ago I read called The Passion Test. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we all need to look at what our passions are and what our core competencies are, competencies are, and, and what, what, what our attributes are, you know, and mm -hmm. that's where I, I use the 30 list, you know, 30 reasons why someone should work with you or surround themselves with you. It's all about surrounding yourselves with. Why with 30? That seems quite extensive. Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly right. Yeah. And 30, it's meant to be extensive. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'll tell you why 30. It's a great question. Thank you. Um, 30, because it's easy to do five to 10. Easy. Okay. You could write down blank piece of paper right now, write down five to 10 reasons why someone should work with you, right? Or why someone should buy. Boom. Exit rich, ladies rich. and gentlemen. Uh, Wall Street Journal number one. And I did not USA ask him one. to do that, everybody. <laughs> All right. Check it out. Check it out. Go grab it. It's in every single everywhere. And there's lots of cool testimonials. There's going to be one more added soon. There's Brian Tracy. There's Les Brown. There's Jack Canfield. I'm in there somewhere. And then, boom, here's another one. Look at that. That's one of my books. All right. I don't know what I was talking about, but there's, oh, the 30. I'm at the 30. The, the reason why is it's really easy. The dirty 30. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, well, no, I don't know about that. The good so it's 30. really. It's really easy for you to do five to 10 right now. Like you can yeah. name five attributes that you bring to the table. When I say, when I call you up and say, Michelle, which I've done, how many times have I done this? I text you and I say, I say, Michelle, I want to introduce you to somebody. Um, are you cool with that? You're like, yeah, of course. And boom, I introduce, I, I, I connect the dots, right? What are the five reasons why I should introduce you to that individual? Well, first you need to figure out who that individual is. And I say, well, it's someone from Shark Tank or someone from, you know, whoever it is. And you go, okay, well, let them know these 
these five things real quick. All right, boom, you got those. The next five to 10 are going to be a little tougher or 20 are going to be a little tougher. And where do you get those? By the way, I'm not asking for 60 or 90. That's like a book, right? That's like literally getting a book and writing a book about yourself. Don't do that. Just have a 30 list and the first five to 10 will be easy, but then work with those other ones. And how do you find those other ones? Here's the key. You ask your clients, your existing clients or your past clients or your friends, family, be careful of the friends and family, of course, because some of our friends and family don't even know what the heck we do, right? But, um, but ask those people you trust and say, could you give me two or three things that you believe I'm really great at? Because I'm compiling, compiling a cheerleader list for myself. Mm-hmm. It's really fantastic. And ask your team, ask your employees, ask your team, ask your JVs. Yeah, yep, it's true. Okay. Awesome. So habits, you're big about habits. You know what? Right? I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you right now. No, you're not. What are three things? Yeah. What are three things that you love? I mean, I'm on your show right here. You, uh, reached out, you reached out and put me on your show. Why is that? What are the three things that you believe in Eric Swanson, Mr. Awesome, and why you trust the fact that I would do such a great job with you? I think first and foremost is your energy. You're contagious. I'm contagious. Not going to say in a, in a pandemic, right? Yeah. Energy <laughs> contagious. Yeah. I think your that. energy, I think you got, you got amazing energy and you're always so positive. You're Love great that. at networking. You know, you always know how to connect the dots and who to introduce who to. Um, I think those are the reasons. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. I remember we, we shared. Uh, some you are contagious. <laughs> I remember your energy, your enthusiasm with, uh, is contagious. What's that? With, we shared some moments over with, with Frank. We just lost Frank Shankwitz recently. And yeah, it's, it's, it's who you surround yourself with. Right. It's, it really is. I have a saying that's um, that goes I, your net worth. I have a saying that's uh, this is what I live by NDSO, which stands for no drama, serve others. Yeah. And it's, it's all about serving others. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be awesome if everybody adopted that philosophy we and have a lot less fights. <laughs> a lot less and it's really easy to do. It's really easy to do. So let's talk about your daily habits. Let's talk about, uh, because you're all about habits. You're all about, tell me about your daily habits other than that. <laughs> other than giving yourself a high five. Well, my latest daily habit is going to get a new chair. Have you noticed that this chair, <laughs> It look at this, check this out. It goes down every... <laughs> <laughs> like I keep on moving it up. So this chair is on its last leg, if that makes sense. Uh, let me move it down like this. So my daily habits. You, can, um, you can't afford a chair. You are successful. I, I hear you. Chair. I know. I just want to go out to my car and like bring it in. Like, can you imagine having a Maserati chair right here? Just like, bam. That's That'd be awesome. Do. So uh, let's see my daily habits. I'll give you a few of them real, real quick. Um, by the way, do you like the frog in the room? What? What's up with the frog? <laughs> Look at that. Do you know why there's a frog in, in the room? But, oh, I have your book right here too. Bam. On this side. Boom. Right there. Hop to yeah. it. Why is there a frog in the room? Hop to it. In front of me. Boom. Um, because uh, Brian Tracy being the mentor that he is, an amazing gentleman, uh, he uh, wrote a book called Eat That Frog. And it's always a constant reminder to eat that frog. And that means do the hardest things first, the rest will go down easier. Yeah, that's what I've always said. That's what I've always told my team. Do the biggest, hardest things first and everything else is a piece of cake. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Like I'll give you an example. Like if you see back here, I don't know where I'm pointing, but <laughs> you'll see like some of my books, like this book right here, Sales Habitudes. It's all about habits and attitude for salespeople. That that took me about a year and a half to write, two years. <laughs> uh, the next one over here, Social Millions, that took me mm, less than a year to write. And then Crush and Dominate right here. This took me about three months to write. It, it gets easier, doesn't it? It's amazing how the concepts just flow and you're in this flow state, which is amazing. So quick habits that I do every day. Um, one is I write. Two is- Every day, you write every day. Every day. Just At what time? Bit, do you have like a, a set time? Day. It's 30 minutes. 30 yeah, but minutes do you have day. a set time that you get up and write or is it sporadic? Is it whenever you can get to it? Yeah, I usually do it in the morning. But I will extend it to about a two to three o'clock time time period because it's really nice and serene and quiet mm. uh, during that time period for me. Um, that's number one. Number two is I do. Uh, so anyway, I write every day. Um, number two concept is when you say you write every day, I'm going to stop you. Pause, pause, time out. Sure. So you write every day. Are you writing every day for a new book? Are you writing every day for something, something else? What are you writing no. every day for? So I'm writing every day to include in my future books but gotcha. not for a specific book gotcha okay. I, I learned this from brian tracy if you uh and brian don't get mad at me for saying this but if you look at any if you go to any bookstore anywhere and get a brian tracy book which 
I highly recommend you do um, if you don't have one yet. And what happens is you'll you'll open up focal point or maximum achievement or accelerated learning techniques or I have a few right here. I've got a whole I got a whole stack of Brian's books in front of me over here in this library. I have the 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 Sharon Lecter. I'll just show you. I've got the Sharon Lecter library right here in front of me. Um, actually, where's the Sal where's the Salo oh, Tucker library? I know I've got well I've got your books scattered everywhere. It's crazy. <laughs> it is Salo Tucker library. I know. Send me some more books. So. So, uh, so the thing is, um, what was I saying? Oh, so Brian Tracy, he has this unique way of writing concepts that what he does is he, he logs them in certain um, folders in, in his computers. And, and then he's, his team says, he has a, a team that writes the books with him. And he says, um, he says okay, well, how, how many, uh, you know, or, or help him write the books, actually not, not write it for him. But what, what's the, co the topic today? And let's say it's, this book is on, um, time management. He'll pull anything that that has to do with time management, those strategies is he's written over the year, and he and he'll pull that, and then he'll edit that book, and boom, there's another book. So if you really read um, a lot of his books, multiple books, you'll see similarities in the concepts, mm -hmm. but it all gears towards that genre for that book. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. So I write every day. Okay, so you write every day for thirty minutes. Okay. Um, I also do what I call the what the heck calls. Okay. Three of them. Okay. What the heck calls. And it looks like this. Um, you pick up your phone, your either your iPhone or your other other silly phone that everyone else uses. Um, but I use an iPhone. And what you do is you you do the what the heck call. So I'll look through my speed dial and I'll say, um, okay, what the heck? I'll call Michelle and just say hi. Hey Michelle, what's going on? You you know what? You get random texts from me every now and then. Yeah, that, I do. That's the what the heck calls. Okay. And I'll just say, hey, just thinking about you. That's all. And you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. I did this uh, the other day with Larry um, Wilcox, you know, John from Chips and. Uh -huh. and and I connected the dots with him, he and somebody else in regard to this water purification company that they're now maybe partnering up with. It's cool stuff, right? The what the heck calls get you in front of it. And it's almost like what, what Brian and, and, um, and Tony used to talk about, which is called TOMA. TOMA stands for to, uh, top, excuse me, T-O-M-A, top of mind awareness. Mm -hmm. So the what the heck calls just simply gets me in front of, gets me to the top of the list on their mindset to say, wow, you know, I'm going to this event. Uh, Eric would be perfect for this. Let me ask him if he, if, you know, what his speaker fee is, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a really easy thing to do, but the what the heck calls are fantastic to do. The other thing I'm working and on. How many of, of those you do? Three? Three a day. Yep. Okay. Do those three a day. And they seem to work. And I'll tell you what happens, you know, and you're, I'm, I'm positive you're exactly the same way like this. I've heard this countless, countless, countless times when they, you know, the EF Hutton uh, line years ago. Okay. When Eric Swanson calls people answer. Okay. <laughs> and I'm serious. I've heard that so many times. Frank, Frank Shankwitz, our dear French Frank used to say this all the time. He's like, Oh, I got to drop it. Eric's calling. What the heck what's going on. Right. He always answers. Cause he knows I got something cool to talk about because I'm always, you he know, used to, you know, it's funny. He used to answer my calls too. Cause he used to say, Michelle, you don't call me very often, but when you do, I know it's going to be important. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you, yeah. What, what, what the, what the heck calls do for you is it allows the, the receiver to not just think that it's just like a, a specific timeline. Right. That you're just time. thinking of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's That's really awesome. And it can be text too. It doesn't have to be phone calls. Yeah. It can be a text. It can be voice, voice text is great. And do you have like your top five or top 10, top 15 connections, like new connections you want to make every single month? Do you do a list like that? Oh, great question. I can't believe you asked me that. Yeah, I call it the elephant list. I write about it actually in this book right here. So this okay. book is, it's a crush and dominate 13 strategies to piss off your competitors. <laughs> um, so I write about there. And what I do is I talk about, um, or I'm sorry, I, I write down um, a list and it's literally a what it, what's called an elephant list. I write down 10 names that I want to connect with over the next six months. Yeah. So that list could be, um, you know, and, and, and it's a it's a, you know, six degree of separation It's really a two degree of separation. Like I put Oprah on the list one time and um, I met I met and shared stage with uh, Stedman Graham. So I'm like, all right, I got one degree of separation now. I'm 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 getting closer, right? So I put sharks. But have you met her? Because <laughs> I've met yeah. Stedman Graham too. I spoke on stage with him. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Stedman's a dear friend. But I haven't met Oprah yet. Have you? I have not yet, but we will. Let's let's put it yeah, in the universe. We will. We will. I'll we tell will. you what. 
once I get the call from Oprah, I'll do the what the heck call and call you at the same time. So you'll be on the phone with us. Right. So, um, yeah, so the what the heck call, uh, excuse me, the, um, the, the list, it's called the elephant list. I literally write down on a piece of paper on the front of the paper, 10 names that I want to surround myself over the next six months that are influential people that I don't know yet. All right. Um, I did that with uh, Joe Dispenza. You know, I've heard tons of the great things about him and now I'm sharing a stage with him coming up. So it's just, it just works in the universe. What percentage I mean. of success do you have on that 10? So if you have the top oh. 10, how many do you, do you connect with five of them, three of no, them, no, no. like on no. average? 80 to 90%. Oh, that's pretty good. 80, 80 to 90%. Per, I'll take at those. least eight, eight out of 10. Yeah. yeah and, it, and I took this concept from Brian Tracy because I'm a, a very good learner. Um, 10, 20 two years, 23, 24 years ago, I started 25 years ago, but about 23 years ago, I took this concept from Brian and he said this, he goes, write down 10 goals. Okay. Let's say these are a list of goals. Take this, write down 10 goals that you want to accomplish over the next 12 months, take it and put it somewhere, like put it in inside, inside a book or something. Right. And just mm -hmm. put it back in your wherever about two years later, three years later, when you, when you're moving to another place or you're, you're doing some redecorating, you'll look at that. You're like, wait a minute. And you'll start check marking all of them. And well, it's kind eight, of like the vision board, right? There you go. It's exactly yeah. The same as the vision board. Eight to it's a mental goal goal yeah. list, right? Eight to ten of these I will accomplish. And it's same thing with with Brian. So I took that concept and I put it towards the um, meeting people, what I call the elephant list. Now here's the secret though. So you put on the front of the, the page, well, here, here's a, I mean, there's a list of my interviews coming up, by the way, <laughs> like Brian Smith and Glenn Lundy and you and Sharon Lecter and everybody. And then on the back of this, what you do is you put, which I don't have anyone here, but you put on the back, you put what, what I call the donkey list. Okay, so here's, this is the cool part, right? So you have on the front, you have, the elephant list of who you want to meet. These are people I'm interviewing, but who you want to meet over the next six months. And then on the back, you put 10 people that you should not be surrounding yourself with that are taking up so much of your time. And you don't have anybody on the back of your list? Well, no, this isn't the real list. I have a list. <laughs> this, this is just an example I was using for you right now. But yeah, uh, but yeah so so you have this this list and and really, um, you know, that, that, that donkey list is what I call it, is, are people that, look, they're taking up so much of your time. How many people, they want to pick your brain. I think one of my websites is pickyourbrain.com. They go to it and they see an invoice from me. All right. So, so, so stop, stop allowing yourself to, to, to get rid of your presence. You know, I heard one, one time very, very recently from one of my master members of my mastermind. And she says, your presence should be a premium. And I love that. You know, have your presence be a premium. So be careful of surrounding yourself with these uh, bottom, you know, they, they're not bottom feeders, but they're people who want to bring you down, right? And I always tell them, I say, look, you know. They want part, something for nothing and they yeah. suck all your energy. Yeah. And, and my answer to them is, um, I, wish I, could, I wish I could hang out with you, but I, I'm, I'm busy. I have an appointment. Now people ask me, well, what if you don't have an appointment? And my answer is, yeah, you always have an appointment. Who's your appointment with? Yourself. Yourself. It's easy, right? so yeah huh. all right so attitude so it's habits and attitude right you know wh what's the old saying that it's 10 percent skills and 90 percent attitude i think mm. is that right yeah so attitude what how do you think attitude really contributes to success for entrepreneurs business owners i mean in my opinion i think it's everything i always say you'll never grow the business beyond what you can grow the owner yeah a thousand percent and and you know i'll take it one step further it's not just the attitude of the owner um or the CEO or the founder or the team leader, it's really the culture that you're developing through, through the team. And, and I've learned that, uh, I learned that the hard way, you know, and I'll publicly say it right now, <laughs> no names, of course, but uh, I'll say, look, you know, I worked with, it's amazing how sometimes our industry, a positive industry, right. Can sometimes, or a lot of times be negative out there because there is some cutthroat inf information or people out there. So what I do is I surround myself with the right people who are there to serve, no drama, serve others. I actually, on one of my vehicles, I literally have this as one of my license plates, no drama, serve others, because it's all about that. It's all a reminder, right? So what I, um, what I do, you know, I, I used to, I, I was in somewhat of a rat race of my own. Hold on one second. Okay. So I was in one of my, I'm getting a new chair. I'm telling it you. It makes for an interesting interview. <laughs> hey, I'm real. What are you going to do? It'd be do? really funny if it just shoots you up. You know? Oh, that'd be awesome. I'm real though. You know, you got to be real. By the way, I want to share something. Also, I just noticed over here, you'll see the red velvet, um, you know, ropes right, right here. 
see that. So yeah. I have this in my 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 peripheral mindset and my my view. I also have things in front of me in my view that really make a big difference in your life. So if you're working at a desk, let's say, I mean, I do videos like this and, and podcasts and uh, interviews and summits. Like I'll, I'll share an example. I have something right here, just right in front of me, Michelle. And it's, it's just, it's me. Okay. It's me with, it's just a flyer that I pass to uh, my team passes out when, when we're on stage and it's simply, you know, all my books or part of my books, whatever, but you have this in front of you. And these are, I learned this from a great friend of mine, Marie uh, Diamond from the secret. She talks about feng shui and which direction you're facing, but the real, real trick or technique is make sure you're facing yourself to give yourself accolades of awesomeness, right? You got to pump yourself up. A lot of us are, you know, we have teams, yet we're alone a lot of the time. So uh, you got to pump yourself up in certain ways. But getting back to um, what I was saying before, which I think I was talking about, I can't remember what I was talking about. Where were we're we? Talking about Let me interview you. Attitudes, huh? <laughs> attitudes, that's right. I was going to interview you. I, I have a question or two for you in a second. So attitudes play a huge part. And a lot of us work with people who have attitude. And I was in what you know, you know, the rat race kind of thing. I was in a rat race of my own now because I placed myself and I put myself and I designed this probably by accident that I was actually the race horse. Do you understand the concept here? I was the race horse, meaning I worked with Brian. Brian was a race horse. Then I moved up to that race horse position in my company. And then everyone around me were, were, that what they were doing is they were promoting me in all the different places in the cities and in, in, in the US and uh, internationally as well in Canada and so forth. And if I didn't show up, they didn't make money. So yeah. I was in a certain position where um, I was really doing myself harm rather than helping the situation. So uh, I revamped, you know, we had a pandemic <laughs> and the pandemic um, revamped a lot of our, our culture and my culture changed uh, right away. I said, no more negativity because they weren't, they weren't interested in me. They were interested in their pocketbook and that was it. And they knew they had a Maserati on their hands. They knew they had a Ferrari on their hands and, uh, and that's fine. And I'm happy that I made them millions of dollars. But at this point, I'm, I'm going to surround myself with the team members that really are growing for the right reasons, still making the big money, but they, they will learn what I'm doing so that they can emulate that as well. So I'm not the only racehorse because if the racehorse is sick or has a, a, a bad ankle one day, what happens? Production goes down, right? Well, and look, that's what we always talk about in Exit Riches, how to build the business to run without you. When you have a business, the problem is the business is you, you yeah. know? And I'm sure you're looking at that going forward, saying, how do I build this empire? Like Tony Robbins had to do an ESOP to sell to his employees. You know, T. Harv Eckerd, the uh, millionaire mindset, started peak potentials, right? What is Eric Swanson doing? <laughs> so yeah. he's going well, to sell a company done it. so he yeah. can exit rich when he's ready. Well, I've already yeah. done it. So that's, it's a good point. I've already done it. So I do not have my, my day now consists of, which I'm really excited about, Michelle. You asked me uh, in Arizona last time I saw you. My day consists of 90, uh, 90 minutes um, a week for every week. That's it. Just being on these, these guys right here. And my team does all the rest of the stuff. And we built, uh, we have over a hundred mastermind members now. Um, so it's, it's, everything's in works and it's amazing. But what are you doing the rest of your time? I, I literally have shorts on right now. <laughs> Stand up. Okay, here we go. <laughs> You can oh, be wait. like David. You can oh, be like wait. David. You can be like David Corbin and say, "I'm not wearing it." I was just gonna say, I don't know, "This is what are you talking about? This is a San Diego suit right here. This is it. <laughs> you wear your watch. You wear your shirt. You're good to go." No, so um, you know, it's it's amazing. You know, bless these people's hearts. You know, like our buddy Bill Walsh. You and I know Bill Walsh very well. He's a great buddy of mine. Bless their hearts. You know, if they want to travel, Bill's. Do you know what his schedule is? It's crazy. Oh, I know his I mean, schedule is crazy. He's in two cities every day, not one, two. All right. And he's got so, and he's got a family. He's got you know. yeah. He's got kids, and family, uh, yeah. and so forth. But that's not for look for me. What I do is this. You're you're my as as soon as we're done. 
I'm off to play with my dog and go down to the beach and hang out, do a little bit of writing and, and help the team. My, my goal these days is to help the team grow so that they become number one best-selling authors. They become num- award-winning speakers and they can grow the business and the masterminds are amazing because now we have global speakers and we have Habitude Warrior. And, uh, and, and I, I'd like to invite you to be on our global speakers mastermind. I'd love to interview you. Um, we have about a year and a half. <laughs> our next, you're going to hate me, but our next, <laughs> I kid you not, <laughs> I kid you not, April 2022 is our next availability. So if you like that spot, let me know. Um, April 2022. <laughs> it's April in 2022. Let's I, get all of our listeners to email Eric and petition to get me to speak sooner than April 2022. <laughs> Yeah, we'd have to bump. Who do you want to bump? You want to bump somebody? Uh, so, so the point is, yeah. Though, let me bump somebody. Let me bump Sharon Lecter. She's probably been uh, on there. Sharon already talks. Sharon spoke. She's amazing. All right. Well, sign me up for April. All right. Well, let's talk about masterminds because you know I think that's a great profit center and a great way for business owners, entrepreneurs to really step outside of their comfort zone. Yes. Before and start we do a that, mastermind, is, right? Before we do that, it's quarter to the hour. So uh, I just want to, um, this, um, this time period is sponsored by Exit Rich and uh, 13 Steps to Riches, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Okay. Back to Michelle. Yeah. So did you hear me? <laughs> so my question Mastermind. was masterminds, you know, um, I think it's a good way for entrepreneurs, business owners to kind of step outside their comfort zone and start their own mastermind within their organization, within their industry, within their community. Would you agree? Absolutely. In fact, yeah. your listeners, if they want to go to decide to be awesome.com, decide to be awesome.com and, um, and s- seek this out because what we're doing is we have something called coach to coach global. And it's a program where we teach the entrepreneur, the person that says, you know what? I'm sick of the rat race. I'm sick of driving everywhere and going there to see them. I want them to come see me mm-hmm. <laughs> and I want to be here an hour a week or an hour and a half. I, I have a new theory, by the way, it's called the 90 minute theory. And what I'm doing now is everything, anything and everything, Michelle, should be 90 minutes or less. Anything that I do, 90 minutes or less. If I'm going to dinner, 90 minutes or less. If I'm going for a bike ride, 90 minutes or less. It's 90 minutes, roughly. Why 90 less. minutes or less? It's a great sweet spot for me. It's I've noticed that that- So gives, a date, 90 minutes or less? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Just so you got to get another one, another one. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I'm covered, night. by the way. I'm covered because if the date goes really well and it goes into a different room, 90 minutes is still fine. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm just saying. So 90 minutes or less. How how long how long are, are, are weddings? 90 minutes. You know, how long are- funeral services, 90 minutes, roughly, Um, you know, your speech should not be more than 90 minutes. (laughs) So 90 minutes or less. How long is this podcast? Probably an hour, but it's okay if you have a Q and a at the end. And that's what we do for our masterminds. It's 90 minutes. So it's a very, very good sweet spot. But um, getting back to your question, um, I was mentioning that we have something called coach to coach global. So masterminds are the way to go. It's awesome. Um, You know, people anybody can do it really. Correct. Yeah. You just pick your niche, pick your, pick your niche, right. And, uh, and figure out uh, what you want to uh, focus in on what you want to share with the audience, you know, and, and you don't have to be like all crazy. Like I am, you can be awesome in your own way, whatever that is. I was talking to my friend Laurel the other day and she's like, she keeps on asking me, I, I love Laurel. She, you know, Laurel from the secret, everyone oh, knows her. Yeah. Um, she always asks like, like, um, like, like, how are you doing? What's going on? She always checks in on everybody, on Bill, on you, on Sharon, on me, on all. She wants to see what's going on on the playing field, okay, of what we do. And uh, and I keep on telling her, I said, everything's awesome. What are you talking about? She's like, well, how do you feel this is happening? And I, I she goes, she asked me the last question she asked me was, do you feel like you're going to get out? Like, are you sick of being pandemic, you know, and being in, in, in the Zoom land? And I said, no, all I want to do is a Zoom, Zoom, Zoom dot com by the way i have that i swear i have that you all have right? what all i have wanted all i want to do is a zoom 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 dot com i have that one <laughs> so i promise you i have 217 uh, uh websites right now that all are urls that d- direct to three websites but my point is this i told her straight out i said look do i want to get out there and do events like our habitude warrior conferences right three-day conference, 33 speakers, you are on it, you're alumni. Um, yes, I want to do those. That's just, they're fun. They're great. Do I have to? Absolutely not. I'm, I don't have to do anything else anymore. All I have to do is build other people's businesses through helping them through the content that I've already learned for the last 25 years. And that means Coach to Coach Global, 
teach them that way or have them join our, our mastermind. So what totally is your secret good. sauce in building businesses? What is your secret sauce? I know mine. What is yours? Yeah, mine's just being there, being present and, and literally diving deep with that individual and, and also individuals, but also finding out what their end result is. Find out what that person, your team, uh, team person, I don't like to say employees. I never say employees. Your team um, players uh, goal strategy is what's their end result? What's the reward that you can set up for them? Like I just bought a bunch of these guys. I don't even know what these are. I don't know how to use them, but they're the Apple new. They go Apple on your head. Thing. I know that part. <laughs> how do they go like this? Like, yeah. This is what I did. I, like, somebody said I looked like Jay Z or something. Anyway, so so I got a I got a headset from Apple, and it's like this brand new, really cool thing, and I don't even know how to use it. But but I got those so that I could do some contests for the team so that they get excited about stuff, right? Yeah. So it's all about getting the elevation of attitude up. Awesome, awesome sauce. All right, awesome Swanson. Any last minute thoughts for our listeners? Yeah, go to decide to be awesome and join our mastermind. Woohoo! Do that. <laughs> Where is awesome? Come Where see, is awesome Swanson? Come see, uh, come see uh, Michelle Seiler Tucker on uh, uh, a year from now. Uh, <laughs> You well, need to, a year and a half from now. You need to bump somebody. <laughs> bump David Corbin. This bump this David list. Corbin. Bump Greg Reed. He was bumped bump. already. This is a this is this is an elephant list here. Bump one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> what does what does Awesome Swanson want on his tombstone? Um, I don't want. No, I I'd rather live. Let's just yeah, not, but when you do, what do you want to be known for? That. What just, what do you want to be known for? What do you want people to to, to, right. to remember you for? Well, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a long tombstone. We don't because, have that much time. Well, it's gonna be a long tombstone. That's okay. all I'm saying. What I'm saying is uh well, six, have, it's I, gonna be six minutes. foot two, it's gonna be a six foot two tombstone. Oh, it should yeah, well, obviously six that two. way, but but the the tombstone is gonna go up to heaven, okay? <laughs> and the reason why it's it's gonna say <laughs> Eric Swanson mentored, and it'll be all these people that I mentored through their lives, and uh, that's what I want. I want, I want to, I want them to all come over and high five the tombstone. That's a hey, that's a good idea, Michelle. I, I should have an imprint. Uh, I'm gonna oh, somebody write this shit down. So I'm gonna have an imprint of my hand, my right hand, like this. Okay, so it'll be in the cement of the tombstone. Uh -huh. So you can come up and high five my tombstone. Do you know how many people do not have that? The world. Really Nobody cool. has that. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Well, you know, we're live, so somebody might just go out and get it. Don't do it. <laughs> or don't be buried near me. <laughs> All right. Any last minute thoughts? Any words of wisdom? Go to Nuggets. Be you. Decide to be awesome. Go there. Join our tribe. And tell everybody about your latest book real quick. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, here. Let me, so let, let me do a commercial. Damn, there it is. What's yeah, up? The 13 Steps to Riches. That's right. It is based off of the Think and Grow Rich principles. So okay. I called my friend Don Green, who's the president of, of Napoleon Hill Foundation. I said, hey, I've got this great idea. I, I called him three years ago and told him this. He's like, do it. It's a great idea. So I came up with the principle of 13 Steps to Riches, which is literally the what's written in Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon mm -hmm. Hill. Boom. So what I do is this, um, what I did is it's a, it's a full-fledged book of amazingness. Uh, I have 33 authors in here and 13 celebrity authors in a 13 book series. This is volume one with Dr. Dennis Waitley, if you could see that somewhere. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Dennis Waitley wrote his chapter in this particular book with the other 33 of us. And the next books that are coming out are every two months, we have another book. I don't know if that's coming in uh, blurry yeah, or not. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, so you have uh, all these different individuals that are really cool. New York Times bestselling friends of mine that are awesome. So this is- You need, you need to get book. MST in there. I was just going to say, we need to talk about that. So this is a 13 book um, project or marketing strategy, if you think about it. Yeah, it's a it's, marketing strategy. It's a marketing strategy. It's marketing for who? For all of the, the authors that are in here. So we come out with this book every two months. So our next one, this one just came out July 15th. The next one's September 15th. The next one is uh, October, November, November 15th, and so on for two years. Now, guess what we're doing? In, and I'll talk to you more about this, um, uh, Michelle, is I'm doing the same concept with 13 steps, but it's going to be based on David and Goliath. 
Mm. So we are excited about that. And we sell these, I mean, it's pay to play to be in it for the 33 authors. Of course, the celebrities don't, but it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's sold out in eight days, this last one. So pretty cool stuff. Wow. Awesome. Amazing. All right. Well, thank you. Awesome. Swanson for being on the show and thanks to all of our exit rich podcast listeners, followers, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share, share with your friends, Share with everybody else that wants to be awesome and share with everyone that wants to be Take a photo of this. Ready? Ready? Take a photo of this. Ready? (laughs) Come on. Screenshot. Come on. Take a screenshot. You do it. You do it. (laughs) It's it's your screen. All right. Let me see if I can do it. It's our screen. We're live. All right. Hold on. Let me see if I can do it. There. Here we go. Okay. Ready? Here we go. That's one, and I'll take the one that I'm kissing it. All right, hold on. <laughs> I'll text this to you guys. All right. right. All right, here we go. Done. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, and we'll make sure we include all of Eric Swanson's, Austin Swanson's information, how you can reach him, how you can contact him, how, he, how you can connect with him on social media. Thanks, Eric, for being awesome. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thanks for t- spending the time, and, and keep on being awesome. Thank you. See you later. Thanks for listening to the Exit Rich Podcast. Don't forget to check out Michelle Seiler Tucker's Build to Sell Blueprint books and Exit Rich, along with more blogs, videos, and resources at ExitRichPodcast.com. Be sure to connect with Michelle on Facebook or LinkedIn and stay tuned for her next episode by subscribing in your favorite podcast player. 